Welcome back, everybody, to episode one of this Let's Play of Immortal Realms Vampire Wars. My name is Gracian. Welcome back to the channel. I really appreciate everybody who watched episode zero and came back for more. Uh, if you haven't seen episode zero, this will be our first gameplay episode. We'll talk about combat in this one, but the episode zero is where I talk about the game and all the mechanics of it, the UI, everything you need to know to get started. If you're already familiar with it, then you're in the right place. So with this episode, we're going to get started with recruiting. Now, I'm of one mind to go over here and conquer this, this um, graveyard first and actually make skeleton warriors my bread and butter melee troop rather than these cultists. These guys do magic damage, but you can see their, their type down at the bottom. It says human assassin. That means that they are about dealing lots of damage but have trouble taking damage back. Uh, another one here, Assassin. This is an archer because it's a range unit. Uh, but from the graveyard, we can get these warriors. So warriors are more bruisers. They can take a little bit more damage, but may not do quite as much damage. You can also get tanks. Can I recruit those? Warriors, archers. Yeah, here we go, a tank. So these units are good at taking damage and sort of holding the line. They regenerate health. They have a little bit more armor. Quite a bit of health for a tier one, to be honest. So we've got those different kinds of units. So I'm a little hesitant to just get a bunch of assassins. So I might actually start by heading off this way, um, conquering this, claiming this. Maybe I'll grab a zombie and then heading over to the graveyard for warriors. So let's grab, let's grab one death cultist. And then we're going to go here. And then so that was one action point to recruit, one action point to move. And now we've got one left, so we're going to claim this. We have to claim this because we can't make use of it if we don't. And also, we can't claim things that aren't touching a claim territory. So we can't just hop and jump over whatever we want and claim stuff over here. We have to take stuff along the way. Oftentimes, what I'll do you know, a little bit later in the game is I'll have a second group and their their job will be to claim stuff. So I'll have a group that's job is to go and fight stuff. And then I'll have sort of a supporting party that comes in behind, claims stuff, builds up, eats the population, etc. So for now, let's claim this. That'll give us experience. And that experience goes to our armies. You can see uh, Mr. Uhamu Nosferim is here is now a part of the way through his level one, but we've also gained a clan level point. So we can go in here. We only have one choice, which is invoked will. Increase Lord attack by 15 and Lord mana by five. We'll grab that one. And then our next points, we'll be able to start heading on down this tree and getting different stuff. So for now, we're ready to end turn. And sort of a Warhammer Total War style. It's gonna go through the little emblems of the different factions up there at the top. So we'll go ahead and recruit a unit of zombies from here, I think. We have to be careful with our blood levels because we're again we're not going to um, get more over time. We have to go and consume population. We can make upgrades in almost anything we find. So here we can upgrade the veterancy of units recruited from here. Not too bad. That would mean that they would be two experience higher, basically, which just gives them a, a bunch of stats. Not a ton, but you know it gives them a little bit of everything. But for now, we're not going to worry about that. We don't have a lot of money. Let's head on over to the library and we'll claim this. There's a city over here. That's extremely tempting. We'll probably want to grab that soon. Although it's not full yet, so we can ignore it until it gets more people in it. We've leveled up again. The early levels are easy to get. The hunger. Each action point, each spent point will give feed action is now free. So this is very important because it means that when we go to feed blood off of people in cities, it does not cost an action. So using the feed option, which will be up here when we get to a city, won't cost us anything, which is very cool. We can use a seer here. We can see how we're doing against the different factions. So we can take a look on this. We have... Different human factions. Here's some of those orders of like knights. Uh, we've got Vlad Dracul, the Maroya. We've got some other Dracul players in here. There's some other Maroyas, and here's a couple other Nosfernus ones. And then we've also leveled up Uhamu Nosfernus. So what we can do now is, like I showed you in episode zero, this spell is already upgraded, but we can now upgrade one of these other spells. So I'm tempted to go with either Rot or Blight because these are extremely useful. 
I think we'll probably go with Blight. So what happens is you get three choices. So Blight lasts for four turns instead of three. So over four turns, they'll continue to take 15% of max health. We can do a increase the area to three by three tiles so we can hit more. So this is probably a two by two. This would be a three by three. That would be very useful to hit more things. Or also gives units minus movement. So we can make the units we hit slower to get to us so they spend more time uh, getting blighted with that. I think I'm going to go with the 3x3. Three three. That sounds very useful to me to make it more likely I can hit more units. So we'll go ahead and continue that. We can't change that out later, which is interesting. You have to actually kind of think about how you want to develop your spells. Now we're ready to end turn. So early turns are pretty quick. Okay, so we have our oh, quest failed. Yeah, see, we were supposed to get to... Well, I don't remember what we were supposed to get to, but we, we needed to spend our blood, essentially, so it's kind of hard to do. Um, we're going to go on down here to the graveyard. We're going to capture the graveyard, and then we're going to recruit from here. And we'll go ahead and grab some skeleton warriors. So now we have a nice little group of units. We only have this one ranged unit, which is unfortunate. If we were Vlad Dracul, we'd have archers all over the place but unfortunately we just have a bunch of bruisers in here essentially so we've got our warriors we have our tank zombies we have a couple of our cultists we can actually move these around which is a nice feature um, and then we have our tier two here who will be our damage dealer uh, this one no is not flying okay So now that that quest is over, we get a choice of another one. We can expand our kingdom. We have eight turns to take 16 provinces. That's going to be a little bit too difficult. That's Our army has to take two every turn. If we had more armies, that would be easier to do. Uh, taking 10 in eight turns, playing cards. Play 10 cards in eight turns. That's kind of hard to do. Or grab four territories in two turns. I think we'll go with this one. This is possible. Not as much experience or blood, but I think we can do this. Can we actually, can we play 10 cards in eight turns? Let's do this one. Let's try. So we can start with this one. Sacrifice, just get some blood. 15 blood, easy peasy. Um, let's, what else can we do? Experience for our bloodline. We could get elites right away. We could also get gain blood after winning a battle. That's pretty nice. Lord's health and armor goes up. So let's take a look at what these do. So if we go along this track up here, make zombies, fiends, and monstrosities tougher. Uh, lords get faster and more initiative. Armor, reduce card cost by 20%. The recruit action is free. Okay. Cultists are stronger. More mana and mana regeneration. Stronger lore. Okay, so this is typically units are stronger. In the middle here, we can make elites. Feed action heals units. Okay. Feed action restores mana. Oh. Uh, feed action gives AP. I've had that before. It's very strong. You just... Every time you go to a village, you eat everybody, gain action points, and then continue on your way. Very cool. Um, and then what's at the end of this one? The hunt. Cities and villages grow faster. Cool. Tier 3 units cost less. And at the very bottom here, we have blood after battles, reducing the cost of tier, uh, sorry, tier 1 units. Might options go up. Veterancy, okay, so there's more unit buffs down here. Ooh, okay, Lord's Health, okay, interesting. So I'm probably most interested in going down this middle track until I get to the horror, and then I'll go back and get some buffs for stuff. So let's grab elites, and we'll be good with that. Now, what do we have to do? We have to play eight more cards in eight more turns. Target village or city against two population. Let's grab this manor. Recruiting a second lord would be very helpful here because we could use that lord to run around collecting blood and stuff. So let's go in here, turn somebody. So who do we want to turn into an undead vampire lord? We've got Doyle Dillinger. Gains three initiative, champion of the realm. 
this person has. What is this spell tree? Da, 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 da. I don't know what this is. But they have Second Wind, Untouchable, Rampage, Vengeance, and Reckless. So this is very much a character about becoming physically powerful and going in and fighting. We have uh, Ukosagd de Kennecott. Oh my god. I'm not going to recruit you just because I have no idea what's happening with your name. Marshall, all units in the army get plus 100% experience gain. This person's more about debuffing enemies with their spells. Cool. And we have Eligio Zedler. Oh, they all have the same portrait. That doesn't usually happen, by the way. Uh, Ranger Captain, all archer units in the army get extra experience. That's not going to be the one we're going to go with. We're not going to have a ton of archers. So do we want the initiative character who's a fighter? They would go in first and hit hard. Or do we want the one that levels up units quickly and debuffs enemies? It's kind of a tough one. They're very similar units. This one will get ignore pain. Suffers no attack penalty by having low health. That's really cool. Regeneration once they get to level 5. Health and armor oh aspect of fury is the spell tree this is the oh random aspects whoa so are these from random things whoa weird creating units doesn't cost action points Ooh, that's nice i think we'll go with this character it might be fun to have a an uber combatant type of lord so let's turn this lord for eight blood so now we get a card that we can cast to summon this character. So we'll go ahead and summon him on this keep. And then this character's job is to going to be to go here and eat all these people. We'll go claim this village as well after that. So this one's almost at max population. Next year, uh, next season, which will be 1401, we'll have more people to eat. So we'll go ahead and upgrade the action point thing first. And we'll go ahead and move over to here. And uh, we'll just wait. Consume available population for extra cards. No, we're not going to do that. And you can see this symbol here means we can't recruit another lord for a little bit. That's on a cooldown. Also, I think we're at maximum lords. Choose a focus for the following four turns. Artisanry focus. Uh, building upgrades cost less. Grand Pursuits, building upgrades cost less, library cards cost more, blacksmith cost, cards cost more. Uh, blacksmith cards cost less, library cards cost more. Let's do this one because there is a blacksmith here. We might grab something. Let's continue. We get three cards to add to our hand. Target Lord gains experience. Consume all population in a village or city. All Lords gain five mana. for All Lords gain five mana for each consumed population. Um, target army replenishes mana. You do this. Let's take the ones we're most likely to use because I want to. I want to play a bunch of cards and finish that quest because we get like sixty blood, which is totally worth it. We'll we'll spend less blood than that playing the cards. So let's take the mana regeneration here. And we want to head on over to this blacksmith. Now let's head back over here real quick and let's feed on our population. So real quick, let's take a look. This village has two of two population. So if we consume this, we should get, okay, nine blood per population. So we get 18 blood by killing everyone in this village, essentially. The other thing we can do is actually upgrade it. Um, we can increase the population growth rate and we can put more housing in so we can have four population here rather than two by getting these two upgrades. I'm not going to spend my blood on that at this time. It is something I will come back to do later, but right now I need blood essentially. So let's feed on these people. Head over here. Head over to the library. Head over to the city. And we'll grab this next turn and eat everyone. Oh, wait, no, we can feed for free. We don't even have to own it. Give me your blood. Okay, great. We have a million blood here. So here we can claim this blacksmith. Now here we finally found something controlled by somebody else. These ones have our flag. These ones are neutral, unclaimed. This is a faction. So I think this is one of the minor Dracul factions. So there's a village here. There's probably, yeah, here's, it looks like a keep right there. So there might be an army in around here. So we might be able to get into a battle this, this turn. Sorry, this episode. 
So let's go to the blacksmith. So we have the Iron Maiden. Gain the magic protection keyword. So this will reduce damage taken from magic sources by 50%. Magus, ma ma Magus Robes, sorry, gain the Magic Protection keyword. So just same thing in a different slot. Gain the Sundering keyword. Attacks reduce the enemy armor by 8. Gain 15 max health or gain 5 mana and 1 mana regeneration. So I think the Eye of the Allfather, creepy, is the item we want here. And then we should get a card. Yeah, so we can play that on him. So now he has this cool trinket which is very, very helpful because his mana generation was only three. Now it's four, and he also has five max mana, so he's going to be able to cast a lot more spells um, in one combat, and then he'll regenerate a little bit faster over time. So we'll go ahead and put the forced migration here. Uh, we can't. We don't own this one yet. We'll do that in a second. Unspent legacy points. So let's go on over here. Feed action heals, or feed action also restores mana. Uh, probably the healing. We'll come back for the mana. And we'll end turn. Hopefully nobody shows up over here and sneaks up on our Lord with no units. Anybody around? Where is everybody? Alright, so here what we want to do is play Forced Migration. Oh, we got a claim. Sorry, I just talked about this. Claim. We can forced migration. So now there's two people in here. We can eat them for free because we don't spend action points to do so. And we get more blood. Awesome. So we spent four blood to get 18 blood. Blacksmith or library to craft an extra item uh, or an extra card 25% less. So we can buy something for cheaper. Two movement. All units in the army gain one movement. That's nice. Feral Assault. Attacks by this unit cannot be retaliated. Witch Hair Garb. Oh, no. Why? Uh, gain 10 armor. These are both very nice here. I think we'll go with the armor for now. Now, Fallen Knight. Helmet. There we go. All right. I have accidentally put that item on the wrong character, so let's do it again. 15 health, initiative... Initiative. We'll, guide the, we'll get this Ring of Haste. We'll put that on our Orhamu here. So everybody in this uh, army is faster now, which is very cool. So let's go over here. We're going to claim this village. We're going to eat the population. And we're going to go claim this keep next. I don't know where their, where their army is. Can upgrade something else. Let's upgrade the necromancy. This would give it a range. Summon a small unit of ghosts, and you can do it at range seven. Here's skeletons, and lower the cooldown to three. Hmm. This would lower the mana cost to half. So, do we want a crappy unit for cheap, a decent unit at a lower cooldown, or a decent unit? at a range of seven, which is quite long. That's most of the battlefield. Oh boy, that's a tough one. I'm probably gonna wanna go with the skeletons. I'm gonna go with the skeletons. I don't know why nobody's home, but I hope they don't show up over here and take my stuff. So now this character might go around back at the homestead and do some upgrading. So let's actually take a look at we can upgrade a building for cheaper. Town hall upgrade. Let's do that. We finished our quest. We get experience and 60 blood, which is actually a hell of a lot of blood for us right now. And we can upgrade one more thing here. Population growth by one. Sure. Let's get some farmers. So now we've got a max population of five, but a growth of two. So it won't take us five years or 20 turns to get all of our people back to eat them. We can come back every uh, eight turns and get a bunch of blood. Let's go over to the wishing well, grab that and see what we can find. Uh, we found an army. That's bad. These people are going to kill my lord, probably.
yeah, here they come. So we'll auto resolve that. We'll have to redeploy this character. That'll cost us a little bit here. Uh, feed on populations. Progress three, turns left two. Capture enemy keeps. Capture four keeps in eight turns. That's crazy. Or feed on six population in four turns. Ooh. Let's do... Let's do that one. Okay. So let's claim this. Let's recruit a fledgling. And then we got to go around and grab this army. We might even get Mr. Doyle back here and try to start building up an army over here. Who has action points? I'm sorry. Armies with action points. Nobody has action points. All right, so they're progressing into our territory. I think I'll just, uh, we'll just have to start moving, stop conquering as we go and just get a move on here. Should be able to catch up to them because they're stopping to conquer as they go and I'm not. This character came in at low health, I think. Yeah, he's got a quarter health. So do we recruit some units here? And then here we'll do a we'll do a construction maximum population up. Here comes some Dracul. Now they're gonna be a bit of a, a butt here and get in our way. Okay, good. They're they're turning around to reclaim their territory. Uh let's see. Recruit reinforcements. Units cost less to recruit. Clan XP is increased. All units cost less to recruit. Building upgrades cost less. Uh, I like that one. Blood income from feeding is reduced. We don't want that one. Let's do this one. New cards. Reduce the cost of the next action card to zero. I like that one a lot. Claim a province. Fortune teller. Because we can use this to make something expensive cheap. Got to hurry up and catch up up here. Get this guy out of the way. Do we want to upgrade this cave? Wow, look how horrible this cave looks now that we've taken over it. The veterancy is pretty useful. The little uh, pips here above the titles of the location show the upgrades you've done. We'll go to here. Uh, we'll go ahead and just claim this now. That leveled us up. That's helpful. Let's get this feeding costs gives action points now. And then we'll go on into our first fight. Can I give this person a unit from here? Uh, you can take both of those. Done. Okay, and then we're going to have our first fight. So we have tons of units here. They're very low level, though, uh, but that should be fine. So let's go ahead on in here. We've got a likely victory because our might is higher than theirs, or their threat. We're going to be fighting Pellegrino York. Uh, he has extra attacks at 69 attack, which is pretty nice. He's got swordsmen, spearmen, bowmen, horsemen and peasants peasants do extra damage when they're low health but are otherwise pretty forgettable they're warriors they've got spearmen are tanks swordsmen are warriors horsemen are assassins okay so let's fight all right 
when you get into a combat, there's essentially a little mini game, and it's called the Lord Aspiration. Follow your Lord's Aspiration to rank up and gain additional bonuses. So this is different every time you do a battle. So our Lord, we want to use abilities to rank up. So if we use our cards, our spells, three times, we will rank up. And the first time we do it, we'll gain 10 armor for this fight. The second time we do it, we'll gain two movement. And the last time we do it, we'll gain Soul Trap, which is a... I think that's where you kill units to get mana. The enemy lord wants to deal damage. So their tanks will get extra attack, then their lord will get extra tank attack, and then their lord will get Soul Drain. So we want to be kind of thinking about killing off their lord before they can rank up twice, because he's going to get kind of deadly in here if we let that happen. I'm not too worried about this. Tanks don't do a ton of damage. Ours is pretty useful. Our Lord is going to become kind of a, a powerhouse with these level ups. So let's go ahead and hit continue. Now this is the beginning of the battle uh, placement phase. So we can actually put our units wherever we want to start out. One thing you want to pay attention to is their initiative, that fist symbol down there by their movement points. So we want our fastest units to not be getting blocked by our, our slow units because it does, you can't move through your own units unless you're flying. So this stalker here is very fast, so we'll go ahead and flip him up here. Zombies are real slow, but I want them to be able to go. Death cultists. You can still delay until the end of the round. So you, if your units get stuck behind them, just have the, the unit that's trying to go first, just delay. This is the battlefield. There are a bunch of different ones of these, so they're, they're not exactly randomly generated, but the placement of these little shrines changes. So these are little shrines. Now this is a blacksmith's curse. Grants repost, which makes retaliation attacks deal full damage. So if a unit is standing in one of these highlighted tiles, when a unit attacks it and it attacks back, it will do full damage even if it's extremely wounded. Here we have a memory altar. Gets, gives four initiatives. So if you are on this tile, next turn you're going to be moving a lot sooner in the initiative. And over here we have the Void Center, Grants Teleport, which lets the unit disappear and reappear at a distant tile. So if you if you go onto this tile, you can teleport somewhere else. I think it might take your action though, but it's pretty cool that if there's skirmishes going on, say here and here, the winners on this side can kind of zip over to the other side to finish up the battle. So with that, let's go ahead and start. So we're starting off with Orhamu Nosfernus. So we have our spells available here. So we've got, the important thing is the range down here right now. So Blight, for instance, it, they're cast using the Lord as the focus. Now be very careful, you can actually cast spells on your own units accidentally. So especially when you're putting the cards back, be careful to either put it, drop it back into your hand very carefully, or you can right click to get rid of it out of your hand while you're holding left click. Don't let go in a random place because you, you can just cast it wherever. So let me just get that out of there. We can raise a skeleton. So we might, let's see, we can check out their movement. So for instance, this character here, he's got six movement. So he can go one, two, three, four, five, six, or six. So if we're standing here, or here, he can hit us. This is not a bad place to be standing though. So what we might do, so we might move up to here. Okay, and so now we can still cast a spell. It's just that once you use a, a movement or an action, it ends your turn. So we can go over here and let's go ahead and use this necromancy here. We've got our summoned skeletons. Now, they're not very good. You can see they have 70 health, um, 10 initiative from standing on here, 35 damage, 25 armor. Now, our regular ones have 140 health, so they're a lot uh, hardier. Uh, what do we want to do? Can we reach anybody with the Blight? We could. Yeah, we could hit three right here. Let's go ahead and do it. So now this area is blighted. These guys are going to start taking damage over time, and then they're not going to want to run through this or risk being blighted again. Here we have our Stalker. Four movement, four movement. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So if we're here, that'll be a good spot for us. Uh, death cultists. We need a little contingency to head over this way and deal with the horsemen. So we'll probably we'll probably um, put a couple units like Caddy Corner here. 
We've got some zombies. No, death cultists. They're pretty fast. Our Necromancer is going to be a very important unit for us. Now all of their human units here, which are quite slow. And our Skeleton Warriors, we'll go over here and make a little area where the, if they're trying to fight us, they can, they'll get hit by two of us at once. And then we have the one unit of Bowmen. I don't know where they went. They're over here. Okay, and their range is five. One, two, three, four, five. They do have this aimed shot probably. Uh, no, they don't. They have the bombards. They can hit units in an AOE. Okay, so we'll have to watch out for that. Okay, so at the end of the round, they all took their blight damage, which is very helpful for us. Uh, what do we want to do here? Cast a K on him. And we could run up here and smack him. So it shows here, damage info, we're going to do 58 damage because the armor is going to reduce our damage by 35%. And we're going to take 19 damage back. So that's a worthwhile trade for me. Um, then he'll get to go, but he won't be able to do anything other than fight back because he's going to be kind of trapped there. So I think we'll go ahead and do that. He's very low, so his retaliation's getting very weak because he's running out of health. He's using a card, giving movement speed to his units. So this unit we're going to... Where's the delay button? Wait. Go ahead and send our summoned skeletons up. Okay, I think we'll wait here with these ones. We're waiting. Waiting. These units can come up and get into position. We'll actually put them on the initiative hex tile, sorry. Have you wait. Okay, now they're going back around. They don't want to come into my trap. So we can use this one. Oh, we can't kill this guy off. So let's actually... Let's actually wait. Wait, can we kill off this lord? No, we're going to do exactly 55. Let's actually wait with the necromancer. I want to get the kill so we get to summon a unit. Okay, well, we're back to using the Necromancer, so unfortunately we just have to do it. So we've killed a unit, and that gives us mana back, which is very cool. So like I was talking about, we do block our own units, so we have to be careful not to pile a bunch of units in behind Urhamu here because we don't want him to be trapped and unable to escape. So we want to have enough units over here to keep fighting, but I think we'll send this unit over to stand here for a second. This unit needs to escape this location, so we're going to pass. And then this unit, I don't want to leave him in here any longer to get any more wounded, so I think we'll back up to say here so you can still get you can't get uh, attacked by more than one put a weight on that one where's the bomb corpse explosion that's cool but we don't need it though so we're just gonna attack so their lord is down so they won't be fin finishing their quest oh abilities aren't our cards that's spells abilities are like um, the skeleton has a guard ability. We have a, a long range shot on our necromancer. So that kind of thing. Let's 
Let's get up to here. I don't want to go... Hmm. I don't really want to get pincered here. Where does this one go? Who's next? This one, and then this one. So I could, I could go up here, and then we'll use this one to go here and, and make sure this one gets stuck. This horseman just can't find a place to fight. Oh God, never mind. There we go. So we used an ability and we summoned a skeleton because we used that necromancer to do it. Okay, we gotta go rescue our soldiers up here. Might need these. No, we've got enough soldiers over here, I think. I don't know what we need these ones for. I think we just... What's this do? Plague Cloud. Damages all non-undead units around the caster. No. Spells available again. We could blight this area. We definitely use a little life steal on this character, couldn't we? All right, so that's a dead death cultist. You guys can teleport now. Wait, 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 who's back here? Wait, who is this? The peasants. Those peasants get back there. Okay, you're getting a little bit low. Might want to get you out of there. Might convince these guys to get closer as well. It's another death cultist, cultist down there. Not my favorite units. Um, rot, cast it on. Oh, that's big damage. That would kill that one off by the end of this round. I don't think I want to attack. I think I want them to retaliate or attack me and me retaliate cuz I think I need support to kill these horsemen. They're they're kind of strong. They're kind of like crazy strong. These are my summoned units, so they can just they're expendable. This is good. Now we can get a flank on these ones. Zombies, let's get them over here. Might be able to use them to finish off these spearmen. And their retaliation is very low at this point because they're so wounded. Wait, that's what your voice sounds like? Oh no. <laughs> Really stand to have a bit of life steal, couldn't we? Just a tiny bit would just do wonders. Where are you going? Into the blight. So 
So these guys are blighted, right? Charge, agile. Hmm, not sure. I think they're blighted. So here we get a full flank. So we can get a half flank here, which will make us do 22. A full flank that'll make us do 25. We've got our, okay, we could kill, we'll do a lot of things here. Let's kill this one off. Oh, so close. Okay, let's get him with the zombie. You're getting a bit low, friend. Right, there we go. We took some losses. Uh, I, I probably could have done it without taking those losses, but those guys are very squishy and they give you mana back when they die. So it's not really the worst thing in the world. They don't cost any upkeep. Kind of like paying eight blood to have a, a roaming 10 mana on your team. All right, so we won that fight. We lost a couple, but um, honestly, I don't care about the death cultist so much. Everybody got some good experience, though, from that. And we've now cleared out a very sizable army. So we'll, we'll use this second lord over here uh, that we recruited to go around and reclaim this stuff and do some building. In the meantime, we can recruit some new units on this one, heal up, and then we'll head on out and um, kind of claim some of this stuff from them because they sh shouldn't have much of an army for a little bit here. Actually, feed this on this blood real quick here. Oh, wait. Let's, before we do that, 10% mana. There we go. So we heal and get mana when we feed. So you can see down here, we can watch their health go up just a little bit. You got a little bit of mana, which is helpful. So we will want to spend some actions um, healing. But in the meantime, I think we're good to head on out. I'll have this guy come back and claim. I don't want to waste time on my main army. So we'll claim this. We'll head on over this way and then we'll end this episode here because we are all out of time. We're actually quite a bit over time here because that combat was sort of towards the end there. But yeah, I hope everybody's enjoying this series. It's it's a very, very fun game to play. I absolutely love having Undead. I think I'm going to get more of these Skeleton Warriors before I head on out because they are very useful. And then we'll, uh, we'll see what else we can recruit as we go along out this way. So thanks again, everybody, for watching. Please come on back for Episode 2. I will see you then.